Hello, my name is Dennis Mulder and I work as the CTO of Microsoft Netherlands. Today, I would like to talk about unlocking digital transformation through developer velocity and how Microsoft is differentiated and in a unique position to help drive innovation within your organization. Uh, thanks, Plain Concepts, for having me at uh, the .NET 2021 conference. I feel uh, privileged to talk to you about uh, application innovation here. You may wonder, a CTO at Microsoft Netherlands, what does he do? Uh, so briefly, I'm uh, very focused on our largest set of customers and their cloud adoption journey with my uh, 12 plus years of uh, cloud experience. I've been with Microsoft for almost 14 years now. Uh, and next to that, I have an internal role in uh, developing our people, uh, creating new career paths and, uh, and topics like that, uh, as well as running our local community. Um, and then uh, third, I'd like to do things like this to uh, present, uh, be part of roundtables and keynotes and things like that. With that, with, without further ado, let me start and uh, give you a sense of, of how we look at application innovation. Uh, so in this digital world, uh, it's made of many things, right? All of our devices, all of our uh, sensors that are, 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 world, uh, are, are available, right? We sort of, especially the newer generations, sort of expect that they can uh, switch between devices and continuously be connected to, uh, uh, to the technology. Right? And that's where the intelligent cloud comes in. That's uh, at the heart of, uh, of our communication. Right? Uh, and then at the edge, all of the, uh, the sensors. So that's on the right side of this, uh, this picture. On the left side, you see three core topics that kind of are connected and that uh, can help uh, companies transform. First, it's the multi-device and multi-sense phenomenon, right? We expect to be able to take care of our banking needs, uh, watching videos, uh, connecting with family and friends, listen to music, etc. Uh, uh, based on the device that we're using at, at that moment. Uh, <coughs> and, you know, the essential point here is that our focus must be really on the experience, the experience of the end user and not necessarily on the technology platform per se. And people really expect to be able to interact with, with the computing in the same way they interact with people. Uh, and that is quickly changing, especially with the new generation uh, joining the workplace. Uh, so in short, experiences need to span all devices and, and all the senses, and that gives great opportunity. When we look at ubiquitous compute, computing, consider the growing array of all of the cloud servers from us, as well as in the SaaS marketplaces and, and with our competitors. They all provide uh, a lot of varied computing capabilities around both the edge and, uh, and then in the cloud. And there's a lot of data flowing among all of these interconnected systems from all of the devices that I just talked about and all of the tiny sensors that are being installed in manufacturing places, in, in, in shops, etc. So there's a lot of data being generated. The billions of events can provide us sort of the input into more data-driven decision-making. Uh, and in order to analyze all that data, you need this ubiquitous computing in the cloud. And then last, but certainly not least, is the intelligent lab, right? I just said it infusing all of the outcomes of that data analytics, infusing AI in any workload is going to uh, yeah, make, make our systems much more intelligent and uh, in that way, much more tailored towards the end user's expectations. Uh, and, and this is what Microsoft has been focusing on right, over, the, over the years in, in build, building our platform. Um, and from that perspective, we look at it kind of a this way, this way, where data and AI is at the center of all of the different industries, right? In every, the future growth of all industries really relies on, um, uh, on the business models that they want to develop, right? Uh, and this will be driven in a large part by applying this new breed of digital technologies to more intelligently engaged customers, 
transform products and services, optimize operations, and empower employees with data at the heart. And the thinking here is that we call this the digital feedback loop. And the thinking is that all of the data that's being generated in the, in the various places, in the various systems that support customers or employees, uh, that we leverage that data, centralize it, analyze it, and then subsequently strengthen the different channels to, uh, to make this better, to, to make those channels better. Right? Think about how Tesla is, uh, is generating a lot of data in the car to optimize their operations so that they know when cars uh, need maintenance or that they can um, engage the customer more deeply, like uh, the window is still open, maybe you should close it. Uh, all of these, uh, these, these connections are driven by data and, and events happening uh, in the various channels. Uh, and this is what, what we're trying to help organizations unlock new value uh, ac across these, uh, these, these channels. Um, and that's what we call the digital feedback loop. Right? So, and because of this, you could say every company really is a software company, right? In today's environment, software development excellence is becoming more critical for business, business success. Uh, over the past years, we've seen organi organizations realize that their future success really relies on taking advantage of the technology that's available. Uh, allows them to rethink their business models, innovate, improve processes to better serve employees and customers. And the re reality is many companies across all these industries are, are literally becoming software companies or are being disrupted by software companies, right? Look at Netflix, look at uh, Spotify, in many ways also look at, uh, at, at Tesla. So in short, basically every company wants to digitally transform. I think we can agree on that uh, here, right? Uh, and according to a recent study by McKinsey and company, there are currently about 20 million software engineers worldwide. Uh, ironically, I have a different number in a few slides where, where, where which could, uh, where you could argue like there's probably many more, but it depends how you count, obviously. And over 50% of these developers are working in non-technical, in the non-technical industry, right? In more in the traditional uh, banking or insurance or retail or transport industry, uh, where it's not purely a tech company like Microsoft or, or any of our competitors. Uh, and then 70% of digital transformation initiatives do not achieve targeted outcomes. And that has to do with how productive those engineers are and how embedded they are in the organization on which we'll talk more, uh, more shortly. <clears throat> so I said it before, right? Today, every company is a software company. And over the years, we've worked with organizations that you see on the slide to uh, enable their digital transformation. And we've noticed that most successful ones are those that understand that this process is not just about adding technology. Right? It's about supporting people to create value that the organization is in need of. And, and when one group, group of people that is a catalyst really for digital transformation is you, is us. I consider myself a developer as well. Right? We are the catalyst for digital transformation. Uh, developers, in many ways, are the builders of this era, right? Creating the ideas, writing the code that enables the digital transformation for organizations around the world. Um, and they've pioneered innovation that's disrupted countless industries, as I, as I uh, talked about before. Um, and this is especially true now that the world in the pandemic has, uh, has had to go even more online, right? We're all behind our screen and... Uh, and connected with, uh, with our colleagues. And because of that, every organization is rethinking sort of their business model and how they, they uh, rework their business. Um, and because of that, developers, you, us all, are more critical than ever before. And in this session, I'd like to come up with some ideas in terms of how to improve your life and as a consequence, the life of the organizations we work for. 
Um, so over the, over the years, right, we've seen many developers around the world build amazing customer applications, right? Uh, also internal back to work applications. There's a lot of innovation happening because of the pandemic and working remotely. And as things hopefully get back to normal over the next few months, Microsoft is really pleased to play a small part in supporting developers around the world um, in helping build applications uh, that make remote development possible, but also, you know, accelerate sort of the need uh, for, for technology in, in organizations. And then all these buzzwords on the slide uh, get into play, right? Um, and we, we really view kind of our whole platform sort of as, uh, as the core of all of this, right? Microsoft is working closely with, with organizations around the world to use our cloud. With at the bottom identity security management and compliance, where I firmly believe we differentiate with, uh, with a lot of our comp competitors in terms of the way it's integrated across the edge, the cloud, and also in a hybrid setup. Uh, and, and one of the things that might makes Microsoft Cloud unique, I guess, is really how comprehensive it is, right? It's Azure where you can build application, custom applications on top of using all of the Legos, I'd like to call Azure services, the Legos, um, to stitch together a, a new solution. Um, and, and you can take advantage of our SaaS solutions like Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, uh, LinkedIn in many ways is also sort of a SaaS platform for, uh, for HR related activities. And, and definitely also the Power Platform and GitHub to, to connect employees and business processes to these custom applications that, that are running on, on top of Azure. Uh, and uh, many organizations are still asking themselves, okay, I've, I've adopted some of the clouds, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of there, but how do I truly benefit from an innovation approach in, uh, in, in the cloud? And that's what I'd like to talk about next. Um, so given the pace of, of innovation, we consistently look forward to ensure we're investing in the technology that meets customers' needs today, but also in the future. So we, we're thinking about that in, in different horizons, right? At horizon one, we see customer demand increase in cloud infrastructure. So we've invested in engineering, in data centers, and, and also in many ways, uh, roles like myself, to ensure we're building the, the product service in need and that we can help adopt, uh, adopt those uh, technologies. And there, the focus is mostly on cloud infrastructure, uh, hosting uh, environments, right, and, and and things like managed databases, where we sort of take away the burden of the operational side of running the infrastructure in your own data centers, uh, so that you can focus more on what generates business value, right? The code, the application that runs uh, runs on top of that. And then at Horizon 2, we're starting that investment cycle, right? You'll see us leaning more into AI and mixed reality uh, as we've seen the increase and, and the benefits uh, from that at our customers, right? So a lot of companies are thinking about, okay, how can I infuse all of that thinking around the digital feedback loop with the data at the heart and, and really leverage uh, AI technologies and embed that in our applications to make the experience for the end user, be it the customer or the employee, much more tailored to what they need. And then next at Horizon 3, which obviously is a couple of years out, uh, we're sort of looking at what's coming, right? Quantum computing, glass storage, there's a lot of work going in, in research to, uh, uh, yeah, to sort of uh, take the next leap in computing in, in, in the uh, software industry, in the technical technology industry. So as I mentioned before, right, the pace of innovation continues to increase. Uh, so we're constantly trying to stay ahead of the curve to ensure we deliver you the tools and technologies uh, for tomorrow, but uh, certainly also for today and, and, and uh, longer term in the future. And we firmly believe that in order to keep up with the pace of change, we need to accelerate sort of the velocity um, of your role to uh, produce the software the world needs. And then in the next section, I'll talk more about, uh, about what that uh, would take. 
So again, the, the, the same research from uh, McC McKinsey and company uh, around developer velocity. Uh, we've seen, right, developers are fundamental of success. Uh, so we need to empower developer teams to create the right environment for them. Uh, that's vital for businesses to truly achieve the goals and increase that innovation. According to McKinsey, driving business performance from software development comes down to creating the right environment and removing points of friction in the process of generating code or, or creating code. Uh, and industry experts typically call this the developer velocity index. Uh, and organizations that sort of recognize this truly outpace the revenue growth up to four to five times uh, that of their, their competitors. And they also have 55% higher innovation and perform better on customer satisfaction and brand perception. Um, there's much more to read around the developer velocity. I'll share a link, uh, a link shortly. But what, what truly is developer velocity, right? Developer velocity is all about driving business performance through software development. It means driving, uh, uh, driving that by empowering developers, creating the right environment for them to innovate and remove any friction points that they find along the way. So it's not just about increasing the speed of software delivery, it's also about sort of unleashing the developer ingenuity, right? It's, it's, it's about providing the autonomy on the platform, uh, the, uh, providing the autonomy to do a continuous everything approach so that developer teams' IDs uh, are translated into the software that the customers need. Um, and unleashing the potential and talent of developer teams, the day-to-day -day developer experience and keeping software talent happy and motivated will drive success, right? It, uh, a lot of companies are uh, challenged by uh, retention, for example. And we firmly believe that if you, if your organization has the right tools and the right mindset and the right processes to develop software, uh, not only the velocity increases, but also it, it will keep you happy. Uh, so we often hear from software leaders, people that you know, manage organizations that develop a lot of software, uh, that the set of potential levers to improve performance are so large and so diverse that it's often unclear how to prioritize or where to start. To lead to a precise understanding of what it takes for a company to increase developer velocity, in the same study from McKinsey, uh, we conducted a comprehensive review of software development practices, right? including technology, working practices, organizational enablement, um, and convert sort of all of this into a single holistic metric, the de developer velocity index that you see on the slide, the DVI score. And the, the, the developer velocity index score takes into account about 46 different uh, drivers across 15 different capability areas. And you can assess yourself against that in a continuous way so that you can determine where you stand today, make investments in, in the developer process, and then measure again where, where, where you stand so that you can truly see sort of the progress that you're making. Um, and this, yeah, really this data just validates how crucial it is for companies to invest in their development teams. And I, I'd encourage you to share this thinking with your leadership if you recognize some of the, of the problems that I uh, highlight or challenges, opportunities that I highlight. Um, so how do you increase developer velocity when you look at sort of our, our platform uh, for your organization? Accelerating developer velocity means equipping developers with the right tools and services. That's sort of a, a no-brainer, right? Allows them to be more agile and productive and take advantage of modern development practices. I still see, I work with a lot of organizations that still, still say they're doing agile, but the reality is they're trying to do waterfall and a lot of back and forth between uh, end users and developers. The developers are sort of you know, not in the right gear, if you will, in terms of being productive. Uh, and your organization can realize developer velocity by enabling developers to build productively, collab collaborate globally and securely, and scale innovation. And those three areas is what I'll talk about next. So in the rest of the presentation, 
we're going to go deeper into how we can help in these three core areas and, and how you can help empower your organization, your peers, uh, developers to create great apps and really fuel business performance. So let's start with the first topic, build productively. When it comes to building productively, it's important to ensure developers have the right tools, right? I said that before. So we need to make it easy for developers to be proficient and continue to advance their knowledge of the latest tools. And that is what this whole conference really is about, right? Uh, it's about the technologies that support the digital transformation initiatives in, in, uh, in your organization. So application innovation and modern development is about building and running applications differently, right? It's all about DevOps, uh, right? Where we marry the developer team and the operation team in one so that they can continuously improve the solution and really learn from what is happening in the run phase and bring that back into the developer phase to make the solutions uh, better. Right? So, in short, it's to help developers build productively, collaborate securely, scale innovation, no matter where they are, especially in this uh, pandemic, and enable them with the most comprehensive developer toolkit and platform for Microsoft. And that is where we believe GitHub, Azure, Visual Studio, Power Apps uh, really uh, need to be leveraged, uh, all of them. And I, I rarely see the thinking where, hey, we need to combine all of these together. Uh, and I'll talk about that next to, uh, to illustrate how that could work. So, you know, today developers can create applications using their favorite tools. And I bet most of the audience feels themselves very comfortable on the left side of this, uh, of this diagram, right? Um, while some applications, require much more control, right? With a code first approach that, that you typically take with .NET and, and, and the ancillary tools. Some applications, for example, relatively simple line of business applications can be created much faster than you could, I would argue, with high pro productivity and skill set in mind by using more of a low code uh, approach, uh, power apps. And, uh, and, and in between, there's this need for APIs that can access the, uh, the applications that have been built in a code first approach, expose them through APIs and let them be consumed by uh, every developer, right? The citizen developers, the business to uh, build those, uh, yeah. Uh, line of business applications that improve certain processes in, in the business. So at Microsoft, we're very committed to infuse this sort of modern development practices with low code, uh, with professional developers, your, you uh, yourself, in this code first approach. So no matter what the level of skill is of people in the organization, we are trying to make everybody able to cont contribute to the creation of software. And that is to mitigate the limited uh, amount of software engineers that we have, uh, have available. Right? Um, so th that is sort of the thinking. And let me highlight one example here from Toyota, who have over 400 uh, power apps in production today, um, where you know, they've created fairly uh, sim simple applications that truly accelerate sort of their, their uh, here you see, uh, the quality process or the validation process to, to capture, easily capture data points in, in the manufacturing and in the service uh, chain. Um, and in order to make this work, right, together with you, we're making Power Apps even more integrated as part of application developer workflows, right? Because this front end is tied to the API that you have may, may have built that, that runs on top of the backend ERP system or this massive database. So also in the Power Apps play, you need this uh, CI, CD, continuous everything kind of thinking because those APIs evolve, uh, the needs evolve, there will be new versions of the Power App so you have the same needs as with professional developers, right? You want to develop, test, and, and deliver in this continuous cycle. 
So there's deep integration with GitHub Actions for Power Apps so that you can do the CI CD motion that you are used to also in, in Power Apps. And then, for example, API management can be leveraged using both Azure Functions and, and Azure API management to host and, and create custom APIs that sort of unlock that data that I talked about before in the, uh, in the uh, digital feedback loop and expose that to, uh, in APIs to, uh, to Power Apps. And then virtual agents uh, is another uh, core framework to the Power Platform family Right? That provides uh, framework, bot framework skills and can sort of automate just like Azure Logic Apps can do automation. But here uh, the business can do it themselves right? in an official way, kind of make specific decisions and trigger other workflows. Um, so next, uh, next topic on, uh, on how to accelerate the developer velocity index right? is collaborate globally and securely. And in many ways, uh, apologies, I'm, uh, <laughs> I, I have to sneeze every now and then. Um, software development is a team sport, right? I think we all recognize that, right? You cannot develop software purely by your own. At least most people don't do that. So creating an environment where developers can collaborate amongst each other and share knowledge is critical to effectively and quickly solve complex problems and build solutions aligned with the needs of the business. So here, the same research from McKinsey found that open source is the biggest differentiator for organizations. And some people may still argue like, oh, it's Microsoft saying this. Um, and, you know, I firmly believe in open source. I firmly believe that we, we have the right strategy to both embrace and enable open source. And McKinsey uh, showed that open source adoption really is that differentiator to become more innovative, right? 30% more innovative and increasing developer satisfaction and retention rates by at least, at least 20%. So how do we support that? And here you'll see this number that, that confuses me a little bit, right? We have 56 million users, more than 56 million users, arguably mostly developers uh, on GitHub. And the McKinsey research said there's more than 20 million software engineers worldwide. So I, I still need to do the math here. I firmly believe it's much more than the 20 million. This number is probably uh, better. But the key here is it's not enough. It's not enough. There's more demand for IT than we as a community can handle. Uh, so we need to become more smarter to develop software. So an open source adoption is, um, is, is in that sense, not just about adopting the next framework, uh, some open source code. It's really about embracing that mindset, the open source mindset, creating a culture where if you finish your code, you share what you learned. So creating a culture of knowledge sharing and contributing to software development to realize the sort of the collective power of a broader development team, a broader organization, or a community uh, like the .NET, uh, the .NET community we have here. An effective collaboration is probably the biggest accelerator in helping making teams more productive and more satisfied. And that's where we'd like to position GitHub. GitHub is already at the heart of the open source community, will always be an open platform that supports all developers. But with GitHub, you can bring the collaboration best practices used by those 56 million developers also into your own organization. And uh, let me elaborate there. Um, so GitHub is designed to help your organization take advantage right, of these strengths. Collaboration is all about effective collaboration because that's the biggest accelerator in helping teams. And by empowering developers in your organization with GitHub, you can both attract and retain the best talent. We firmly believe that. Uh, another key important topic here is security. If you leverage open source, it surely accelerates the pace of innovation, but it also introduces risk. Right? It's critical that it's done in a responsible way and that you can detect uh, the usage of open source and um, potential vulnerabilities that are creeping into your code base. 
And this is where GitHub provides uh, end-to-end sort of traceability of the usage of open source and uh, notifying you of potential security risks. And then DevOps, right? I talked about it before. Automating the deployment processes, the continuous everything phenomenon improves the agility of software delivery. And that saves time and money. And at Microsoft, we sort of offer a seamless code to cloud experience with GitHub Actions for Azure to help your development teams easily create and automate workflows to build, test, deploy, and run applications on Azure. That is uh, sort of the thinking. And uh, in GitHub, we're thinking about these three core, core areas. Let me dive a little bit deeper here. So increasing collaboration with your development teams as well as between your teams and the community is critical, right? We talked about that before. Collaboration is at the heart of GitHub, right? Last year, developers made over 1 billion contributions to open source projects and private repos um, that are hosted on GitHub. And GitHub connects your team securely to the open source community, empowers your teams to implement a culture of inner sourcing. So what is inner sourcing? That is this thinking where you take the open source mindset and the open source learnings, apply them internally, right? A central team developing the framework that all of the other teams use, but in an open source way so that the teams can improve that framework and thereby um, enhance the work of, of all of the others, right? Inner source is enabled through sort of expertise sharing, cross team collaboration, improved code reuse, and as a consequence, increased developer velocity. And in the end, uh, most innovative companies are also winning the war for talent, as it has how they attract and retain talent. And we firmly believe that our platform uh, can help there. Uh, so last topic, scaling innovation. Um, sparking innovation for customer experience and line of business applications is top of mind right for everybody i think for all business leaders your leadership and there we've seen that public cloud adoption is key for developer velocity for non-software teams mckinsey identified public cloud adoption as the, as one of the key catalysts for developer velocity uh, and this arguably if you ask me is all about giving the autonomy right to spin things up try things out without all of the um, dependencies on other teams to, to get access to, to infrastructure. Uh, removing those dependencies accelerates. Um, and when it comes to this public cloud adoption, right, a common trigger for customers is to start modernizing applications, right? At a certain point in the life cycle of an application, you're like, okay, this is the right moment. We can move it to the cloud. And, uh, and truly leverage the, the, the power of cloud technologies. Uh, so there's varying difference rates, right? Lift and shifting with virtual machines brings you in the cloud so that you can look around and see all of the, the past services available. Uh, you can modernize using containers. You can adopt the fully managed pass uh, services uh, that I talked to about before. And sort of the no-brainer, if you ask me, while well, moving to the cloud are adopting managed databases and the entire DevOps tools, tool suite in, uh, that is in, in, in GitHub and, and many of the other tools. So let's take a look at a modern application pattern, right? Uh, this, I'm sure, is something you recognize, right? On the left, you have your tools, uh, you use Visual Studio Code, you check in your code, you create this uh, inner loop where you uh, produce the software. And then you can leverage GitHub Actions, uh, uh, Helm Charts, Terraform, YAML files, etc., to deploy your cloud native app on this container platform, empowered in this case by uh, Azure Kubernetes service. And then you leverage Azure Monitor and, and other monitoring tools to do the operational side. So this is all great, right? Containerized application development. But how does this um, help accelerate sort of the need for software, right? Uh, and there's a lot of use cases where this model fits nicely, but I'd like to open your mind for a different way. Um, and here I, I call that low code to serverless. But think about um, 
you exposing the APIs, doing all of the professional development, the hard work to connect to the existing systems that are that are in place, and then leveraging Power Apps and Teams as sort of the user interface for uh, for those tools, for those uh, technologies, empowering the business and basically everybody in the organization to come up with, with applications. And if you then strengthen that further by embedding those people that develop uh, those applications on the Power Platform with DevOps, taking them into your developer team will truly accelerate uh, the developer velocity. And once you have this sort of uh, set up, you can leverage AI on Azure to infuse AI into all of those applications. Be it on the top with scenario specific services like form recognition and cognitive search, or with our API driven cognitive services around vision, speech, language, um, and decision making, or with your own models in our machine learning service. So we believe that uh, together with McKinsey, right, companies that empower developer teams and developers with low code platforms even score higher on innovation, plus 33% more innovation. So don't just think about, oh, I need to produce all of the code, leverage other people that can do the, their piece in the creation of software using low code platforms. With that, I'd like to close with, uh, with our mission, empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. Um, and this also includes you, right? Empower every developer and every team on the planet to achieve more. Uh, let's become more digital. Thanks for having me at, at this conference. Uh, enjoy the rest of the conference and feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or dmulder at microsoft.com in case you have any questions. Thanks for your attention, uh, and I look forward to the rest of the conference. Bye.